Ready for this? I'm ready, bro. Let's give him hell. What's up, fight fans? Sadly, you don't have the UFC this weekend, but you do have me. My name's Sai, and you're watching Against the Fence live Q&A, where you guys ask the questions and we bring the fighters. Now, joining me today is a pretty dope guest. I'm really excited to get into this one. Now, he's not been in UFC for a very long time, but he has so much experience for someone who debuted just a year ago. Uh, his freshman matchups were against the likes of Ronnie Barcelos and, of course, Rafael Sansel. And I guess these are examples of how highly regarded he is by the bra UFC brasses. But his record is 23 wins and six losses, two and one in the UFC. He's fighting out of UWF USA, Los Angeles, California, bantamweight division, the Josh Barnett's protege. It's Victor Henry. What's up, dude? Vic, what's up, man? How lot, are that's we? A lot of intro. That's a lot of intro for just simple old me, man. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean, little old you? Come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to have this sit down. You seem like a really cool guy, full of a lot of character. And, uh, you know, you're not just exciting to watch, but, you know, I feel like, you know, you, you got a lot outside of the octagon, which, which, which can, you know, really sell yourself to a lot of fans. A lot of people can relate or, or you know, really love you. Yeah, I mean, you know, this, this fighting thing is, uh, is a very short window in, uh, like in my life, in mm. the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, I, I have developed other interests in my life. And, you know, with, with fighting, it's, uh, you know, it's always been an interest of mine, of course, to do it. Um, use it as an avenue to 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 um to really push the other things in my life also you know yeah. i like food you know so obviously i want to try foods from other cultures and what better way to go to see other cultures than fly over there and fight somebody and then have some food and everything you know so yeah yeah you know with, with fighting it's been a uh, it's been a, a great avenue in which to explore all the other interests in my life you strike me as the kind of guy who might um sort of look at the map um but also look at the menu and depending on what cuisine you fancy could be the country you go to next yeah i mean that's that's basically how i mean it kind of was you know when i first uh fought in japan it was uh, it was against uh, Hideo Tokoro, and he mm. at, at the time it was gonna be my like my seventh or eighth fight. Yeah, and he had already had forty fights, and Josh was like, "This is an opportunity for you." I was like, "All right, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go do this." And that being of course, said, everybody what's would, the menu? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Okay, well, what are we gonna do after that?" And then I found uh, I found this one place called Gogo -Go Curry, which has now been the staple of any time I ever go to Japan, I go there. Yeah. That's the place. Yeah. Is it called again? It, it, One more time. Go, go, Perry. Go, go, curry. Go, go, curry. Okay. Yeah. And that is, it is outworldly how good that place is. And sure. they, I mean, and it's kind of like a little chain over there, but it is, it is great. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Now, see, I love that. I love that. I mean, food is, is again, it's, it's like my, my, my strength, my weakness. Um, I do love it. I do love it. Well, let, let's get into some. Yeah, well, especially when you gotta make weight. Ugh. Oh yeah, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> you know, there's a question I got a little bit later. We'll get into it as well, but um, but yeah, it, it touches a bit on food. But let's get, let's talk mm -hmm. about I guess your last uh, outing in the UFC, right? So you're coming off a split decision win over Tony Gravely, um, and in the Octagon interview you had with DC, you said that you weren't too pleased with your performance personally. I thought round two was fire. Honestly, seeing the way that you sort of came out with those hands and boxing, probably the best bantamweight divisions seen outside of the top 15, really. So absolute dogfight. But you no, know, walk me through what was going through your head and, and, and why you made such a critical comment about your, your, your performance. Well, you know, I figure, you know, if you're landing so many significant strikes, then there should be, there should be an unconscious person on the floor in front of you. You know, you know, you don't want to, you know, if you go in there, you could hit a guy nine times, but if it doesn't hurt him at all, mm. then you've, you've wasted your energy. You know, the, yeah. uh, I'm not the, I'm not the, the power striker that, you know, Rumble Johnson was rest in peace, mm. but you know, yeah. so, you know, I don't have that one hitter. I can, you know, I can hit people. And I do have TKO wins, of course, on my record, but you know, if I'm going to be putting out that volume, then I want to, I don't want to be there for the entire 15 minutes of a fight. You know, I, sh I think I should yeah. be able to put these guys away and putting people away and getting finishes is what, you know, the fans want to see. It's what the UFC wants to see. It's what I expect of myself. So yeah. going out there and having a long drawn out fight is not exactly ideal, especially mm. if I'm doing that kind of damage 
in any time that I'm not finishing the person, yep. it's actually an opportunity for them to pour it on me also. Yeah. So it's not only it's like, okay, I can, I can, I could beat the, you know, beat the hell out of somebody, mm. but then, you know, they, they wind up and all of a sudden they let one go and it puts my lights out. That's not, that's not fun either. You know, mm. and with totally gravely, I knew that he maintains power throughout his fight. And mm -hmm. he ha he doesn't have a real slick style of slipping punches and moving out of the way and setting up combinations. We've seen a, uh, more than a few times where he'll just cover, 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 and then all of a sudden he'll just let a left hook go, a big right hand, and he just sinks his opponents. Yeah. So, you know, in that in that second round and even in the third round where I was picking my shots, I didn't want to open up too much because I didn't want my technique to start to fall, and then all of a sudden. He hits me with something stupid because my hands were down and my you know, or my chin was up or right. whatever. So there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of half committal things on my point on my part. But at the same time, I'm only half committing because I'm aware that he's going to try to reciprocate. But mm. in my mind, I have to be more open minded when in the fight and not just be worried about his counter, mm. but expect his counter so I can counter that and move forward from there and get to my yeah and you moved so well like your head movement was was brilliant you know you're touching all of the body but you had the right mixture as well of, of weapons so it wasn't just with the striking you put in some some grappling with that too and that was perfect that that, that gave gravely a, a lot of looks and a lot to deal with I mean you, you outstruck him in that fight 190 to 90 so you know already right like it was yeah. it set the record for the most strikes thrown in 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 a three round bantamweight fight when you're throwing that many punches, I'm expecting at least, I mean, it's some, it's the definition of a, a death by a thousand cuts, right? Yeah, right. But, yeah. you know, why why do you want to cut somebody a thousand times? Why not just hit them a couple times and, have, and be done with it? Mm -mm. You know, so I can walk out with a bonus finally. Yeah, yeah. And then you can get things, really cool things like that car was talking about just off air. Oh, yeah, yeah. That we can, that we can get those kinds of things, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's weird because I've, you know, uh, for a few of my fights, even the Barcelos fight, people... You know, the fans were saying, oh, fight of the night for sure, fight of the night. And then I didn't get it. Mm. And then this time with Tony Gravely, fight of the night for sure. And then I didn't get it either. And I'm just like, well, I don't know what I got to do, but whatever. <laughs> I'll just I'll just keep fighting, you know, the the um, the um fight of the night. I mean, the bonuses are good, but there is no fighter that would not give up every bonus just for the win. You know, yeah. so the win is what's most important. No, I hear that. And it's it's the tough it's tough, isn't it, when you're fighting on on really prestigious cards. When you're fighting on great cards, um, it does up the stakes a little bit more, it makes it a bit more difficult for you to get fight tonight. But uh, but at the same time it's a bit catch twenty two, right? Because you do want to be on those cards, vice versa. Yeah, and you know it, what's funny is that we've noticed that sometimes when there's a super stacked card, mm. you know, and just uh, just from a fan's perspective, when there's a super stacked card, those tend to be the cards that are a little bit boring. Yeah, you know that everybody's kind of like, oh, it's it was what it was whatever. And then the cards that people sleep on, you know, that people are calling mid tier cards, those are the yeah. ones that are like absolute bangers that everybody's like, wow, this was a those was, these were fun fights. Yeah. There there were finishes. There were there were submissions, knockouts. You know, crazy exchanges. Those are the ones that people want to fight. I mean, people want to watch. Yeah, you, you're not wrong, and we've said it multiple times with our watch long. So whilst this is uh, our Q and A, it is just part of what we do over here at ATF. So every single Saturday, there's a watch long that we do to the, these fights and these events. And it's whether it's exciting, whether it's boring, or whether, you know, either or, everything in between, we're watching them. We're giving full commentary on the fights and the breakdown with the community. And uh, and to tell you the truth, some of the most exciting ones that got us out of our seats have been the ones that you might sleep on because oh hell it's you know it's not big names that we know it's not gonna be too great but you know you got people coming out there um who try to make a name for themselves and you and and and, and boy do they <laughs> yeah i you know and i think a lot of that has to do with the um the the uh, journalism side of of mma mm. uh, a lot of times people will only look to the ufc and specifically only the top 15 of the ufc where the ufc is only one promotion yeah you know they have I mean, they have about 600 fighters on their roster. Yes. And each weight class only has, you know, top 15, you know, 15 people that are, are that people are looking out for. And that's yeah. an injustice. I mean, we have one FC, we have Pry, I mean, Ryzen, mm. we have uh, RCC, we have, you know, so many, so, so many, many promotions that are, that are international, Bellator too, you know? Mm. So it's like people that are coming from other, other organizations into mm. the UFC or people that are, you know, putting on good performances they're everywhere yeah you know so it's kind of like 
I understand where you can't you can't know everybody all the time. Yeah. But if you're going to consider yourself an MMA fan and a fight fan, then you owe it to yourself to look at other organizations yeah. and draw comparisons and do all that. You know, I mean, who's to say that the 155 champion from 1FC or Bellator can't beat the 155 champion of the UFC? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think UFC is the gold standard when it comes to promotion and how they do things mm -hmm. and the way they take care mm -hmm. of their athletes. But I, I think it would be foolish to say that the best of the UFC will beat the best of every or other organization. Barring all the things like, oh, yeah, well, what about the one FC people that who are clearly sauced up or, you know, these guys? Let's take all that out of the equation. Let's talk about martial arts skills. Like, do you think that, you know, maybe number maybe number seven in in uh, in one FC can beat number seven in UFC? Maybe. Who knows? You know, these are I mean, that's that goes into wanting to cross promote and, you know, UFC versus one. Or just yeah. like Bellator did versus Ryzen mm -hmm. on the New Year's Eve card. You know, these are the things that fans want to see. Those are the fights that are going to be fun to watch. This is true. Yeah, this is true. And, you know, we always um, like to keep an eye out for those those prospects, those who are rising up, those who are doing the next best thing. But, you know, you're right. UFC tends to be the platform where all eyes are, but there's so much that happens just outside of that. Um, so if you do have the, 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 the time and the capability to, to, to absorb that too, like, you, you, you won't be disappointed. That's so true. Um, yeah, because that's where I came from. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And, and this is one of the introductions, right? I was just saying you, you've been around for so long, and for a lot of people, you you, you might seem new. Um, and what was a huge way to sort of uh, come onto the scene was your fight against Ronnie Barcelos. So that, that upset win, of course, for those for those who who were who hadn't seen you before and thought that Ronnie had that one. Um, but uh, you know, it, it was it was it's spectacular, perfect, beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, no, your your relationship, I guess, with Josh Barnett. So. You, uh, you, you, you obviously been dubbed his, his protege for some time now. What, what does that mean to you, and and uh, how integral is he to your training? Well, that that's a double edged sword. Being a, uh, you know, being a, a protege to somebody who's been around for a very long time, in 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 the fight world. I mean, you want to talk about just his recorded history as far as fighting. What about his, you know, his history before fighting when, you know, because he said it multiple times where he'd be on, you know, on on platforms on the internet, you know, going, Hey, who wants to fight? Hey, I'll be in this, I'll be in this area on this day and they'll just meet up in the gymnasium and they'll beat the crap out of each other. You know, mm -hmm. back in the bare knuckle headbutts, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be, you know, UFC one kind of days, you know? Yeah. Um, so when you're dealing with somebody like that, the, the expectation is a lot higher because it's like, well, how are you not doing the research when there's all this information at your, at, at your fingertips? Like you have YouTube, you have, I mean, just in Southern California alone, you can't go more than a few miles without finding uh, uh, some sort of kickboxing gym, some sort of jujitsu gym or a MMA gym or a fit or, or a strength and conditioning gym where there's jujitsu guys and kickboxers there anyways. So they're, they're everywhere around here, mm. you know. So with so much availability of knowledge, Josh is the type of person is. How come you haven't done this kind of research? How come you haven't done this? So when he's looking, when he's talking to the younger generation of fighters, mm. you know, the amateurs coming up now or the new pros, it's like, yeah, you have no excuse. Right. You have no excuse not to not to do this, not to do that, not to do this, because back in Josh's day, you had VCR and tapes, and you had to buy this old mm. old tape from. Who knows where? You had to ship it in from Japan just so you could watch a tape on Fujiwara, you know, that's only in Japanese to learn your 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 wrestling uh, and your 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 catch wrestling, learn your toe holds, and learn your techniques. That is a lot harder than just typing something up like toe hold on on YouTube. It's a lot harder, especially like I said, with the availability of everything on our fingertips, you know. So when you're training, everything has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be intense. It just has to yeah. be right. And then once it's right, then you can start picking it up. Then you can start doing this, and then you can start doing that. You know, again, bringing a guy like I mean, you just meeting a jo a guy like Josh, where you figure, as a professional, as a fighter, you want these kinds of guys training you. But just because you want it doesn't even mean number one that you deserve it. Number two that you have the drive that they even they even seen you so 
you know, I got lucky that Josh Barnett saw the drive that I have for martial arts, you know, and just learning just the art of fighting. And then not only that, but then I also did all the things that he said to do, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand that, you know, guys like Josh Barnett, people come up to him all the time. Hey, can you train me? Can you train me? And it's like, if you take on everybody mm. to train, you're going to roll yourself thin. Cause right. so how do you go through all the people that are, uh, that are about that life? Me, I told myself at a very young, uh, at 18, I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm gonna dedicate my life to training. Mm. So that's what I'm going to do. So when sure enough, when he comes around, he goes, all right, I want you to drill this every day after practice. That's what I did. You know, and then he would, he wouldn't even watch me the entire time. He would take off cause he's Josh Burnett. He needs to go somewhere or whatever. And then when he comes back a month later, I had been drilling that by myself every day after practice. Oh, okay. That's good. So it's kind of like little steps of mm. proving myself to him. And then he'd be like, all right, you go do this tournament this weekend. I'm like, uh, okay. And you know, I would drop all the plans that I had, whether it be work or go hang out with friends or whatever, just drop all that. Cause I got to go compete. Cause Josh told me to. So it was a long time of that before he was like, you know what? You're a cool guy. We're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to try to make something of this. So it's not like you just go up to somebody and be like, Oh, Hey, can you train me? Yeah, sure. It's not that like that at all. It's having to go through the internship. The uh, the trials and the tribulations of even just getting to that point where somebody was willing to pour into you. Wow. Yeah. Now, what I'm understanding there is it's quite a prestigious thing. You know, it's not just a case of you know everyone gets an opportunity here. So it actually just makes it a little bit more. Uh, it does put a bit more weight to it now. You know, when you do explain it like that. But um, yeah, he, he has high expectations of you. Then I guess I imagine. Oh, I mean, he has ridiculously high expectations of me. You know, I mean. Oftentimes it's more than I expect of myself, but I guess that's the, the coach's duty, you know, to, if he has a certain expectation of you, then, and if you don't expect it of yourself, then, uh, he's going to be the one that pulls it out of you. Fair enough. And I, I guess for those guys, then I guess who remember Josh from the early days, you know, being, um, you know, having the records that he has, of course, uh, like one of the, the youngest, the, the champs of his, of his day, are you, uh, are you um, and, and Barnett similar in any ways or dissimilar in any ways? Uh, are you both perhaps a bit of motorheads? Uh, you know, uh, do you guys have some stories? I mean, I guess outside of the of, of the out of training, uh, what's 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 yeah, it like? Yeah, so I mean, one of the you know one of the main reasons was that I was a lot like you know he he and I had a lot of similar interests, so that helped facilitate things. Of course, you know we both like metal, we both like uh, we both like cars. You know, we both have kind of similar senses of humor. Yeah. You know, he likes to go further into the philosophical, you know, things like we'll be in a, we did a car ride from Washington down to, uh, down to Southern California, driving at the 1970 Cutlass that I was telling you about. And this Cutlass didn't have a radio. So what, what, what did he do? He put on a little <laughs> Bluetooth speaker and we were listening to philosophy the entire time. Uh -huh. And it was, it was brutal for me because I'm, you know, a lot in a lot of ways i'm still you know i'm still a kid from la i'm just like bro oh man this is weird. And he's like no if you want to think about it this way and i was like i don't want to think i just want you know i'm still you know i'm still uh you know of this generation where i'm just like i want things quick i want things fast but i actually know how to i know how to slow things down mm -hmm. and be like okay i gotta really think about this and he's over there being teaching me about carl jung and nietzsche and i'm just like man how about those guys fight and we just see what's up, you know, like, you know, like whatever, but <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of similar interests and, you know, fighting of course is one of is, is one of them metal cars, senses of humor, mm. you know, the, just those kinds of things, you know, the, those things helped along with the, uh, with him and his uh, desire to train me, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. No, imagine. And curious, the philosophy, like what was, uh, what was it? What was the philosophical tangent you guys were on in that on that journey? What was it? Uh, so story? on the car, if you I can remember, they were talking about yeah, yeah. So we were. I mean, I remember he was talking. They were talking about uh, the the growth, uh, growing the growing of human, uh, the man. You know, the growing of masculinity and men, and how we do things. You know, and how we perceive um, hierarchy in society. Yeah. You know, and how how certain men veer a certain way towards, you know, how we deal with our problems. For instance, if you and I had a problem, I would just be like, yo, I don't like, 
your shirt. Well, I'm sorry, this is my shirt, so I don't know what you're going to do about it. Hey, fine, I'll be okay over here. You know, we're going to be okay, you know. But then there's other guys where they're like, okay, they don't like something about you, and then they start going behind your back. Right. And they start doing that kind of thing, you know. And and it was weird because I grew up with gang culture around where I grew up, you yeah. know. So Tough gang. And I would tell them, I was like, yeah. So I would tell them, like, hey, like, the older gang members, they handled – a certain they handled their business certain ways mm. and it was never it was never roundabout you know behind your back kind of you know passive aggressiveness it was never it was never like that mm. so when the older gang members when it came to that it was like yo this guy need hey they were going to a younger guy you need to calm down you're doing too much you're going to get us caught up with the police or you're going to get us caught up with whatever's going on you need to slow your roll so then these young guys, of course, they want to be, they're they're so gung ho about proving themselves that they do things in the wrong way. And it's just, you know, so you know, of course, I came from that background. So I'm we have hit pause on this on the uh on the um on the on that little philosophical thing and where I just start talking to them. Listen, when I was growing up, the 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 uh a lot of the Mexican gangs, they outlawed drive bys. Because they were like, listen, we don't want to hit innocent people. If we're gonna hit, if we're gonna hit a target, we're gonna do it this way. Mm. And then some of the other gang members around the, around the time, they didn't listen to the, the to the outlawing of uh, of drive bys, so they did drive bys anyways. So then when they got when they hit somebody, then when they hit an innocent person, they didn't report that person to the police. They did, they did their own justice. They were like, yo, if you did this. And we find out that you did this. We're going to handle you according to what we judge. So it wasn't even about getting the police or the government involved. Mm. It was about handling your own. You know, so, you know, it's like it's kind of like if me and my friends are, are hanging out, one of my friends is being an idiot, then, and if somebody's coming around, of course I'm going to take my friend's side, even if he's wrong. But then after this whole situation is done, I'm going to confront my friend. Listen, man, you got me into some deep shit because – of some stupid things. Of course, I'm going to take your side because I'm loyal to you and you're my friend, but you were clearly wrong on this. Mm. And now we have something that we got to take care of. That's cool. So that's cool. There was, there I, was, I a, lot of, there that. was a lot of that going on. Yeah, there was a lot of that going on mm. in that in the, in the car, right? And, you know, and me having to explain because Josh came from a different area. Mm. So, of course, I'm over here thinking, like, no, this is what would happen in my area. This is what we would do. Yeah. You know, this is what the older guys would do, you know? So it was a lot of diving into my my uh my growing up and how i saw things wow. and him growing up and how he saw things right, and yeah what what nietzsche was saying and how he saw things so we were just all combined those things and yeah. those elements and come to an understanding of all oh, it's just but then again that's how in that in that specific conversation that's how us men did things right and there was another question I wanted to, to, to ask, and I'm going to ask you to forgive me because I, I do want to poke the elephant in the room here. And it's something that a lot okay. of people have been saying online, but also something that you can't help but notice, right? You're 35 years old now, right? But by yeah. no means spent. You know, we've seen you debut against Ronnie Barcelos mm -hmm. and, of course, the, the, the striking record. Um, both landing, was it 315 combined blows in that fight? Um, but... Uh, in 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 a, in a in I guess um, some critics in the community will say Father Time's going to be coming for you, catching up pretty soon. What's your response to this, and how far well. do you intend on going here? Well, you know, here's the thing: Father Time catches up with all of us. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not just you know, not just me, not just all these no, just you, um, just you, love Jacob, of course. Just, just <laughs> yeah. me, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna take that L then. Um, <laughs> you know, what's funny is that ever since I was 18. I've made martial arts my life, mm. you know, and when I say that, I mean that I for I for went, I mean, even dating, I didn't date until I was 25. Because I was like, you know what, because I, I had this crazy ex-girlfriend, I was like, women are crazy, I'm just gonna date, I'm just gonna date <laughs> martial arts, that's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> you know, so from 18 to 25, I didn't even go on dates, all I did was train. Mm. And, you know, from that age, I, like I said, made training my life. I would do something in the morning, I would do something in the afternoon, and I would do something at night, as long as it was related to training. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time, 18 years old, I was just like, okay, you know, just doing martial arts because I like it. I was going to school. I was yeah. working at Knott's Berry Farm. When I started fighting around 19, 
is when I really started coming into my own as far as just training. Now, the reason why I say that is because even after fights, I was thinking about what could I do better? What could I implement into my training that could be more beneficial to my long-term longevity in this sport? At 19? And 19, yeah. That's, that's because I was thinking, that's well, good. Yeah, because I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I can't, because the reason why I even went into fighting also is, again, like I said, I was, at, I was in school. Mm. So I was at a certain point where I was like, listen, this fighting thing is getting harder. So I'm going to have to d d put more time to fighting. But if I put more time to fighting, it's going to take away from school. So I can't do two things at once. Right. I need to do, I can't half-ass two things. I need a whole-ass mm. one thing. So I chose fighting because I was like, you know what? As long as I ain't got no kids, I don't, I don't, I keep my, my responsibilities low. I can always just go, I can always just put more time into fighting. So that's what I did. Um, so that also meant that I didn't go out and party. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Mm. I don't do drugs. And I have, I've never done them, you know, and it's not because I'm against them. It's just because I knew that it would get in the way of my fighting. Mm. And the only reason why I knew that is because I would see some of the people that like, I would fight on the same card as people and I would fight. And then, you know, of course my teammates would win and what would they would do? They would of course go out and have a cel celebratory drink or five or nine or 10 or whatever. And all of a sudden they're waking up the next morning and they're absolutely blasted and they're super hungover and the, and life sucks for them. And the first thing I thought was, well, I don't want to feel like that. But then you had these other fighters that were, that would go on, do their celebration for a whole week. And, you know, I'm not going to say they were wrong because it's like, oh yeah, you spent eight weeks in a training camp. Of course you want to have one week of, I just want to party. Mm. I get it. You know, cause they had their, they were super disciplined and, you know, they just spent eight, 10 weeks just training super hard, and then they're going to get back eventually. But I never did that. The first thing I thought was, I'm going to train, I'm going to have my fight, I'm going to let my body recover, and then I'm going to go back to the gym. You know, I didn't want to do all this drinking, and I didn't want to do all that because, for number one, I was broke. You know, I was fighting. I was broke. So I didn't have that kind of money. So I think all that has ultimately caught up to me now that I'm older, of course, I'm 35, I'll be 36 next month, next month. So do I, is my body moving like a 36 year old who's been fighting and drinking for that long? I don't think so. I think that my body's moving a lot like these younger guys. I mean, I'm not, I'm by no way am I seeing that my body is just as good as these younger guys. Cause you know, these the, youth is not something you can ever uh, emulate and get back. But I do believe that the fact that I've taken care of my body so well, yep. um, that I'm able to push these numbers, I'm able to push this pace and, and essentially make set these records. It only shows that all those things that I did, all those sacrifices that I made to martial arts and for martial arts has actually kept my body young. And even though I am 36 in, in, you know, in age, you know, I think my body is pretty good. Mm. You know, of course, Father Time is going to ca catch up to me, but am I going to look like, uh, you know, Coleman? Because Coleman fought when he was 40, what, 42, 43? Yeah. Oldest UFC fighter? Yeah. To compete? So am I going to look like that? Probably not, but we already know that, you know, Coleman had a little bit of a drinking problem. He had other substance abuse problems. Mm -hmm. I've never had any of that. You know, the right. human body... The human body is amazing that if you take care of it, it's going to take care of you. And I've, I've spent years taking care of my body. So I think I'll be all right. Yeah, no, I think you will too. I mean, the way that, like I said, by no means spent, right? Like you've been going out there doing spectacular things. And I just, I just wish I got to see you sooner. And, and I guess that's probably the mindset of someone who, who, who is, is not, I mean, I could have, if I looked elsewhere outside of the UFC, but you know, it, it, it tends to yeah. be that platform that does, that brings like this, this, this talent to our eyes. But yeah. Um. I guess looking at the band and weight division, right? It's it's pretty stacked right now. You know, the top ten to fourteen fighters will actually. Uh, they I think they got like streaks of anything upwards of like four fights, uh, four fight win streaks. But I'm gonna ask you a question now, which I've I've seen in previous interviews you've had. When everyone ever asks you who's next for you, you'd always say something like, oh, "I'm gonna finish my next meal, get something to eat, and then I'm gonna get back in there." Like, there's certainly a sense of urgency and a sense of willingness to to, to, to go. So my question for you is yeah. uh, probably what's for dinner, um, but. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I just started a new meal prep. So tonight I've already finished my meal prep for the week. Yeah. So tonight I'm, I'm thinking I want to get some sort of barbecue. Um, 
not Korean barbecue, not, uh, I, you know, I, I th I'm thinking I'm getting uh, some sort of Mediterranean food, you know, because I like that garlic paste that they, they come with. Not the hummus, but it's the garlic paste that they put with their stuff. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. That stuff is delicious, and and I'm gonna have the garlic. I'm gonna have garlic breath, and I don't even care about it. I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. Nice. Um, just recently, you know, the UFC is just uh, un, you know, they told me that they're they're interested in moving forward with more fights with me. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not I, I. They think I'm they think I'm good enough for some more fights. So here we go. You know, yep. I don't know who they have in mind. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe Kenny G. Did you hear about that? But they're they're saying that I look like combat Kenny G. So. The musician, right? Yeah, the combat Kenny G. So okay, if if Kenny G wants to fight over the over the name, that we can do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm thinking something with like a you know, when do you reckon you'll get a number to your name? You know, because you know, like I said, the division is pretty stacked. Ooh, could, mm -hmm. could it be? Would you like to take anyone particularly in that top ten to fifteen um, that you can see? I mean, I know Side in the Mega Medal very recently came off of a, a loss, mm -hmm. of course, as well, and he's ranked at number fifteen. Um, What's uh, any proposal been on the table? Hey, you know what? Um, I'm not. You know, the only the only number that really matters is number one. So, and that's the champion. So, yeah. I'm not talking about the number one contender. The champion is the, that's the only one that matters. Right. So, you know, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there, and you know, it seems to me like a lot of people want to punch me in the face, anyways, and they'll be happy to do so. So, I know that there's never going to be a shortage of people that want you'll want to do that. So. Okay. You know, who knows? You know, <laughs> whatever, whatever the UFC wants to do, I'm pretty much down with it. Let's go. And for fan questions, um, I've got a couple here as well for everyone else who, who, who is watching this over YouTube and watching this live right now, of course, feel free to drop your comments into the, uh, the, the, the chats below as well. And we can now ask uh, Victor Henry himself um, your live questions as well as you go through it. But let's have a quick look here. Uh, Tay is, is 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 part of the, the ATF channel as well. He's not here, of course, at the moment, but he does um, have a few questions he wanted to ask you. And one here was, you know, if you were to have a dream matchup at any era, and you could be talking about different eras here as well, like um, as you just were, what would that be? What would that matchup be? Uh, I would fight Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Genghis Khan, dude. His DNA is in everybody, and uh, you know. <laughs> I, obviously he was pretty good at what he did yep. but also because you know you know you don't you don't deal with that that kind of you know that kind of man where it's obviously he's a world conqueror you know yeah. that's not that's not something you run into every day and if you can fight somebody if i could fight somebody that has had an impact on the world like he has Maybe him. You know, that's, that's, I, there's got to be a... Are you talking ferocity. about fighting him and winning, fighting him and losing, just fighting him full stop? Because, I mean... Fighting him no matter what. Fighting, fighting him no matter what. I mean, if we were doing battle mm. in war, of course I want to win so I could tail the tail. Right. But if it was just a... If it was just me versus him, hands, let's go. And, you know, it's then we'll have some, we'll have some food afterwards. But, <laughs> you know, but, you know... Great. Somebody, some fighting, uh, fighting a legendary uh, person like that, mm. where they, their their name has gone in in many books yeah. and in you know his his his, his lifetime is obviously all across. I mean, his his um achievements, yeah. whether good or bad, are across you know this world. Yeah, so. I think um, Victor Henry. Like, uh, I think if we were to do a matchup like that, we're gonna have to get you a, a conqueror's name too. So, uh, yeah, you know, we'll have to really scratch our heads and really think of something that, uh, sort of matches up to Genghis Khan, you know, maybe. Yeah. I, we, we're going to have to work on something because there's nothing there's, I mean, beating a name like Genghis Khan, that's going to be, that's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever encountered an opponent that genuinely terrified you? No, no, none. Um, no I mean, so there, so I remember, uh, I fought in Russia and one of my opponents gave me the Ivan. Uh, if you guys ever seen Rocky, the guy gives me the Ivan Drago lip. So we're weighing in, and he goes Bleh. with his lip. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh yeah, did people do, do that? I'm like, what are you doing? Does it work? Yeah, I was like, What are you doing, bro? Like, is something okay with your lip? I'm like, whatever. And then I fought him, and then whatever. Um, yeah. Though I would say the opponent that made me the most nervous was the first time I went out and I fought in Japan when I fought Tokoro. Um, and the only reason why he made me nervous was because of the experience that he had already. Mm. Um, and it wasn't necessarily 
I, where I flew over and I knew it was, I was going to be nervous or whatever. Right. It was more of the fact that, of course, before the fight, I'm walking around and then my coach, Josh, he goes, we got to stop by the Isami store. And Isami is a, is a martial art brand over in, in Japan. And they make, they make chin guards, knee pads, gloves. They make, it's a martial art you know, store. Hmm. So I go over there and I'm looking around and the, one of the very first things I see, I see a DVD and it's a whole highlight DVD of Hideo Tokoro's entire achievement, all, all of his fighting achievements when he fought, you know, Hoist Gracie, when right. he fought his entire thing. Right. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm some guy that nobody knows about. Mm. And now here is his uh, DVD of his lifetime achievements in fighting. And I'm about to fight that guy. Okay. So part of me was just like, well, I already know that I'm being brought out here to lose. I already knew that. It's not like they're going to expect an exciting fight. No, they brought me out there because they want to showcase their guy. I, yeah. That's that's just what it is. You know, right. when you're dealing with fighting in foreign countries, that's what they're bringing you out yeah. there for. You have those sort of journeymen that made... they, they might pin you for. Yeah. Yeah. Until you've made a name for yourself and the and the community respects you, Mm-mm. that's what you're bringing out, being, being brought out there for. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, in one of my Russia fights, they didn't tell me what time weigh-ins were. They didn't tell me where the weigh-ins were. And in fact, I went to see the doctor post weigh in and they said, where's your chlamydia check? I said, what, what? Right. Chlamydia check. I never had to do anything like that, but that's the thing. They They throw curveballs at you. Right. Because they want you, they want you rattled because of course they want their guy to win. I see. I hear. Anyways, I saw, I thought, yeah, I saw Tokoro's, uh, Tokoro's uh, highlight video and I was like, oh, well, that's what they're bringing me out for there for. Well, screw them. I'm going to, I'm going to upset some people today. Yeah. Or, I'm going to upset some people when I fight them. So well, that's what I did. But mm. that was the only time I was really like, man, I'm, 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 I bit off a lot. Yeah. Let's see what, let's see what this is about. Yeah. In that it's, it's those sort of moments yeah. of just sort of proving people wrong that, uh, that really drive, drive you to, to just, to just keep going at it, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's those things where it's like, where you can either sit in place and know exactly that you've done nothing. Mm. Or you can give it a shot and see what, what kind of greatness that you can achieve by yourself on your mm. on your own merit, yeah. on your own training, on the on on just being brave. Sometimes being brave is stupid, but sometimes being brave is freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. And I guess you can't really be brave unless you're sort of in. I'm getting philosophical now, but you know, unless you're in those moments that that sort of you have to overcome fear. Um, yeah, but you know, there it is. Got Mark Shorts in the chat. Hey, Mark Shorts. He says, hey, guys. Um, so he's a big wave and shout out for you, Mark. And then Canadian Bacon as well, who's responsible for those questions. He says, decent. <laughs> decent. <laughs> nice. Um, but uh, but yeah, guys, any questions, just try to drop them on in and uh, we'll be able to ask Victor Henry here live on air as well. So we get to hear it straight from uh, the horse's mouth. Apologies. I, I didn't mean to call you a horse, but... The way it came out. It's That's all right. I got, I got a long, set. I got a long face. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the way they cut my hair. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. You, you keeping the hair? You keeping it long? You keeping it? Uh, you keeping it growing? I'm gonna keep it. But, but, yeah. I'm uh, uh, until I start balding, then I'm gonna shave it off. Once I start balding, then I'm not playing that game where I'm gonna have like my hairline all the way back here. <laughs> no. Once it starts balding, I'm I'm shaving it off. Yeah. In fact, the only reason why I grew my hair out is because I'm lazy. Okay. I didn't grow it out because I like long hair. I grew it out because I don't want to go to the. See, I don't want to go to the barber. I've, I've I've got to disagree with that. I don't think you're lazy. I don't think you're lazy. But I, I get it in terms of, in terms of priority lists, it's quite down there. Mm-hmm. When it comes to um, grooming, very lazy. Yeah. Okay. I I have I have very selective. Um, I'm very selective about where I put my efforts, and most of it is towards fighting, of course, training and everything. Yeah. But it, when I get home. And I think, okay, do I go get my hair cut or do I take a nap? I'm going to choose a nap every right. time. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I grew my hair out. I was like, you know what? And it's probably cheaper too. And of course, Josh is like, how is it cheaper? It's $50 or $70 every time you get your hair cut. I was like, that's the point. I'm not getting my hair cut. We're good. It, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's still there. Okay, okay I, I hear that. And so, so Josh isn't a fan? He was not a fan, but now that, of course, that it's long, his problem was whenever I would swish my hair out of out of the way, yeah, and it would it would it would take me it would be a small moment that took me away from whatever I was doing, whether it be in a fight 
or training. Because mm. if I have my hands up and I go like this to get the hair out of my face, all of a sudden somebody punches me. Yeah. That's something that he's annoyed about. Yeah, right. But right. I was like, bro, once it gets long enough to tie back yeah. and I don't have to worry about all that, then we're good. Yeah. But up until yeah, then, man. it was like poking me in the eyes. Okay. You know, always coming out. But yeah. It had to get to a certain length. We, we all have it. We all have it. You know, when you can, when you're growing your hair out, I mean, I get that stage. I get that sort of middle stage, like in between getting a short haircut and an afro. You know, you have to go mm. through that middle stage, which is a bummer. It's 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 it's, it's you, you're working towards something great and glorious, but you have mm. to go through that stage of of ugliness. And it's like, ah, I'll get there soon. Just bear with me. Bear with me. It's it's in the process. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, it it sucks because it feels like it's six months of awkward phase, yeah. and then one week of like oh my hair looks nice and then another six months <laughs> all right yeah. so uh, another question here and then we'll, we'll go into uh we'll, we'll wrap it up with it with, with a game but um this one is what is your mma mount rushmore mma mount rushmore uh when when laney hart announced my name in rising now for those people who don't know crazy pride lady right when she would announce Vanderlei Silva, Mirko, Col you know, with pe for people that you know watch the the Pride, you know, the Pride days, that crazy lady who would announce the names. Yeah. When she announced my name, was my was I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Even I mean, Bruce Buffer is a cool guy, and he, you know, of course, he has those nice suits, and he's always going out there looking looking nice. But when Laney Hart, just because I come from that area, I I grew up watching Pride and. You know, it's just how they did their shows. When she announced my name, that was like, wow, that that that's a pretty cool moment. Oh. You know, that was the that was the height of the. Uh, I would say that was actually one of the moments that actually took me away from the fight for a second. Because right. once I'm checked in in my head, I don't care what goes on. There could be, uh, you know, there could be a, uh, you know, some guy, some people fighting on stage. There could be, yeah. whatever is going on you know, outside of the cage or the ring, I'm not even paying attention to. Right. Because, you know, of course I'm locked in. I want to, I'm going to fight somebody. Yeah. But that was the only time where I was like, I took my eye, my, my attention off the fight for a second. Yeah. Because she announced my name and I just, just nostalgia, all the memories just running through, you know, of course her announcing Vanderlei Silva, Josh Barnett, you know, mm. you know, all the Gracies, just everybody she's announced Sakuraba, you know, that was all cool. Yeah, but yeah, that was the moment that took me away oh, from the fight for just a second. Oh man, okay, now that is that's quite. Sick. And and uh, I'm not going to sound like a, a proper uh, UFC um, sponsored boy here when I say Bruce Buffer didn't do that for you. No, I mean Bruce Buffer was cool, but it was it was like fighting out of the left corner, blah blah blah. blah. Okay, fighting out of the right, but it wasn't like mm -hmm. he's got his own he's got his own thing. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to say that it's better than Laney Hart. I think Laney Hart is the Everybody remembers Crazy Pride Lady. Yeah. Bruce Buffer, he's good too, but you know, it's time is only a new oh, when he says it's time. Yeah, yeah. The only people that the people that know that are new fans. Yeah. You know, the people that know Laney Hart are the people that have been here the entire time. Yeah. They all know Crazy Pride Lady. Yeah, yeah. And she, and she gave it a whole uh the uh La Mangosta. Yeah, she tried it. She tried it, but you know the, my, that nickname came from Josh. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I would, I would love to get into a little bit more about that nickname, but we do have another question here on the on the fan channel, and um, this is from James MMA. He wants to know when can we see you back in the octagon. Um, so I guess it's just a case of you know uh, what's when what's, somebody when si somebody when somebody signs a contract and uh, we're we're going. I mean, I'm healthy. Mm. So and you know, unlike a lot of the. Uh, Unlike, unlike a lot of UFC fighters, I don't balloon up to 30 pounds over my weight limit. I don't do that. That's not something I do. That's not, I don't think that's being responsible with your own body because, uh, having, I mean, we, we look at cases like Hennon Burrell where he would get so heavy and yes, he would make the weight, which is because he's a professional, but then he would balloon back all the way back up. Yeah. It gives, it serves you okay for like the first round and a half, but then your cardio starts taking a dip. You know, I don't, I don't do that kind of mm. thing. So, you know, I'm ready whenever the UFC is ready to get me back in there. Yep. Um, like I said, I know they just renegotiated my contract. So, you know, we're, we're set to go. Nice. Um, if James wants to make that fight happen or make a fight happen sooner, then he can meet me in Southern California and we could get an octagon together. What's up? <laughs> 
There you go, James. Uh, when uh, when is he next back in there? The moment you start you sign the contract, he's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant! All right. Well, that's 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 cool. I mean, that's just a a little bit for the for the fan segment. Um. Oh, oh I guess we do have another one here. Okay, we'll squeeze this one in. We'll squeeze this one in. This is from Mark Shorts. Okay. Go for it. So Mark Shorts, he says, uh, hey, Henry, what was your um, mental state like uh, going into your first UFC fight? Did you feel more pressure than usual or maybe even more excited? Maybe it was just another fight for you? You know, just exploring on that. What's, uh, how how did you respond? Uh, it, honestly, it was just another fight for me. Um, you know, after doing all the traveling that I've done in different countries and having to fight in different areas, you know, I've learned, I learned something very early in my career where everything always changes except for one thing. The one thing that stays the same is that somebody is across the cage trying to knock you out or choke you, you know, and even jujitsu guys, even grapplers, even wrestlers, they would rather go out there, punch you once and have you be knocked unconscious. Mm. So, you know, Essentially, everybody's going to try to sock you in the face. Yep. That is the number one thing. Yep. Everything else changes. The, the venue changes. The odds change. The opponents change. The, uh, the pay changes. The audience changes. It all changes. So when, uh, when I did find the UFC, I'd already put it in my head. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people here. I fought in front of a lot of people before. Yes, there's a dangerous opponent in front of me. I fought dangerous opponents before. Yes, there's all sorts of other things that are outside of my control. The only thing I do have control of right now is the fact that I'm going to fight somebody. Yeah. So all those, all those jitters, all those, all that doesn't even affect me anymore, man. I mean, it's just another fight. Of course, I approach every fight like it is my last fight because it could be you know this is not this is not baseball this is not football this is not soccer yep. you know this is you don't play fighting so you have to go in there with that mentality where this could be the last fight yeah you know so you, you go in there not just okay i'm not in there just to collect a check of course you know mm -mm. i'm in there to fight you know and the check is 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 a good part of it but you have to really be in a in a mental state where it's it's it is just a fight, but at the same time, it is is possibly your last fight. Yeah, you know, you don't know what's going to happen in there, so you got to go out there and give it, of course, everything you have plus more, mm -hmm. and you have to try to take it away from somebody who does not, obviously is trying to take it away from you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your last fight against Tony Gravely, like for him, it was it was it was go time. He was free and uh, um, uh, two and or two, I guess well now he's four and four in the UFC. So, um, yeah, for him, it was. A yeah. Case well, of... well, you know, it's funny with a guy like Tony Gravely, I've, uh, so I've been to American top team before mm. I never trained directly with Tony Gravely because I was, when I was there, I was hoping Kyoji Horiguchi get ready for one of his fights. Right. Um, and you know, Steve Bruno comes up to me and he goes, Hey, you train with Josh, blah, blah, blah. And Steve Bruno has actually done a lot of traveling to, you know, I think he was champion of a, of a South Korean organization out there and he's traveled to Japan and. We have a lot of the, he came from um, lion, you know, a lot of his, uh, I think lion's den. He has some coaches that were out of the lion's den. And for the people who don't know lion's den was, uh, you know, Ken Shamrock's crew that, you know, Ken Shamrock, Frank Shamrock, like those, it was those guys, a lot of old school guys. Right. Um, so me and Steve Bruno had a lot of old school coaches that we, that we both knew. So it was kind of like mutual acquaintances. Mm. Um, and Steve Bruno was a cool guy. And the thing is that I, you know, while I was there, I, you know, I would see the way Steve Bruno would push his students. And I knew that Gravely was going to be in shape. There was no doubt about it. Training for Gravely, my main thing that I was training for, or rather banking on, was his defensive style. Right. His defensive style leaves him directly in front of you with his hands up because he's, I mean, because his, his hands up, his eyes are open because he's looking for that small spot to land a hit, of course. But, you know, when you're doing that, you know, you're taking a lot of damage. You're standing right there mm. in front of me for me to hit. Yeah. So I already knew that Steve Bruno, he's a, he's a, he's a well, he's a, is a well-versed coach. He's going to make sure his athletes are conditioned and he's going to make sure that his athletes have all the proper tools to dispose of their opponents. Mm. So, you know, like I said, just that kind of 
you know, it brings me around to the beginning where I'm just like, oh, well, you know, these the, these are fights. These are the, the, it could be the last fight. Yeah. Okay. Now, very well said. And, and this is a comment here from James MMA. Thanks again, James, for, for chiming in. He says, uh, Victor, love the piece, uh, the pace, sorry, that you're, that, um, uh, of the fight uh, that you had, of course, there against Tony Gravity is what he's referring to. But he said he can't wait to see you back in there. Um, that's from James MMA. Uh, he's signing a contract now, I imagine. Um. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. It'll be a it'll yeah. be a food eating contest inside an octagon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, man. Well, that's, that's all we've got time for in terms of, by way of, of, of fan questions. Again, thanks guys for chiming them in. Um, uh, wish we could get a, a chance to, uh, to to sit here and ask fan questions all day, to be fair. But uh, it's, it, it's it's just good to get a feedback. And again, it's just the idea of ATF is to have a platform for the, the community to be able to have their opinions heard as well. So uh, we do create that space for everyone. Yeah. Um, I guess what wraps up next is 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 it's the end of time for us. You know, we've 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 been here for for a minute. Uh, we've we've got into it. The, the last thing would be a game called This or That, if we have got time for it. But uh, that's up to you, Victor. How's how you how you doing on your clock? I know we we're running a bit over. I'm with it. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, it's a quick fire game. The idea is just to go through at speed, but we're gonna get a little bit under the skin and find out a bit more about what your preference is and and how it sides. But um, All right. if you're ready, I'll start with the questions. Go for it. So you have to choose between, and here's the first one, wine or beer? I don't drink at all. Oh, okay. So if you had to. <laughs> uh, then I'm going, I'm going beer because beer has a lot of calories, and I tend to lose a lot of weight really fast. Right. So beer, and especially the Germans, what they'll do is they'll exercise, drink a beer, and they get all swollen yoked. And we've seen, those, we've seen the strong man coming out of that area. It's because they drink a lot of beer. Wow. So that's quite funny. You know, even when it comes to like a, a delicacy like wine or beer, you're still you're still critical about it. And it's like, ah, it's all business for me. So if I drink beer, yeah. it's because it's giving me calories. It's not to enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's great. So you answer that question, but you answer it in so many ways as well. So uh, more than you know. But here's another one. So Netflix yeah. and chill or live sports with the boys? Netflix and chill because I get to sit down and rest before I go train again you know if i have to go out and watch sports with the boys that means probably we're probably going to get rowdy they're going to do something and guess what you're probably going to catch me over at the food vendors anyways my friends <laughs> took me to a dodger game one time for yeah. my birthday i'm not a big fan of i'm not a big fan of baseball but it was may 4th and they were doing a dodger game and they had all you can eat chips and dodger dogs and everything so I was doing that, but I was just like, yeah, Food. sports, whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Netflix and chill. Oh, okay, that's cool, that's cool. You can find me by the, by the, either by the, by the food truck getting food or, or at home chilling out. That's cool. All right, next one up. Yeah. Here we go. And I wonder if you can sort of relate this somehow back to the, back to, back to fighting and resting. But it's time machine or magic wand. Magic wand. Okay. I imagine we're gonna be wishing yeah. up some food at the, at that. Uh, at that, at that, at that um, where was it again? It was go go curry. <laughs> go go curry, magic wand because I could probably just magic wand a time machine there. Oh, okay, that's you clever. can't. Ti- that's, that's, that's <laughs> you can't you can't time machine a magic wand, but you can <laughs> magic wand a time machine. <laughs> okay, this one: winter or summer? Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go winter. Right. I'm gonna go winter. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go winter. I and I know I, I'm in Southern California. I know I, I have a yeah. very twisted opinion on weather, but here's the thing. When you're hot, you can only get so naked. <laughs> when you're cold, you can put on you can put on more layers and more layers to get warm. I, so yeah. that's what I'm going for. Yeah, I, I recognize it. You can control it right more. You can have control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean you get to a point where you just can't start shedding skin to keep cool, you know. <laughs> You can't oh, take yeah. any more. No, yeah, you can't. No. Yeah, you can only get you can only get naked. That's you know, it. If you're cold enough, just go up running. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Absolutely. So, um, planning it or winging it? Winging it. Cool, cool, cool. You gotta, yeah, you wing it. You 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 have to enjoy the chaos of moments. Mm. Um, if you if I mean if you if you know me personally, I do a lot of planning to things because of course you know it is the way it is. But if you knew the way Josh treats me. As far as let's throw Victor into a situation, let's see what happens. Yeah. Usually, some something funny is gonna come up out of it. A, a quick story about that. Yeah. Uh, he a, a while ago, 
Josh sent me to Thailand to train. Uh-huh. And he go and I went to a city called Pathum Thani. It's on this, I think it's on the southern part of uh, of Thailand. But anyways, he goes, You're gonna get off the you're gonna get off the uh the airport, you're gonna meet this guy. He's going to take you to this one spot. He's going to drop you off. Now, when he drops you off, I need you to find what north is and walk that direction. You're going to see a red truck. When you see a red truck, make a right and walk until you hear people, you know, obviously training. And I was like, what What are you talking about? Sure enough, after about 30 minutes of walking, after I got off this thing, I see this old beaten up red truck just on the side of the road, just not even working, plants growing through it these big lizards on it and everything. I was like, well, I guess this is where I'm going to make a right. And I just walked and eventually I, I heard people kicking pads. I'm like, Oh, I guess that's where I'm training. So I walked in and sure enough, you know, there's this, uh, there's this old, old Thai man named uh, Santi Anoy. And he goes, Bita, Bita. I was like, yeah, it's me. He goes, room, come down train. I was like, okay, that's what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so throwing, throwing myself into the chaos of things is, Often times when you know the best memories are made. Wow. Yeah, I guess that right. It's uh, you're free falling. You don't have control of things necessarily, but uh, that's when things unexpected can happen, and something's wonderful. It sounds like. Yeah, some things are. That's, some things are awesome. Has anyone yeah. ever told you that you should write a book? I think you should write a book. Uh, I, I've been told that I should be in a book, like on in a medical uh, in a medical study book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I imagine, I imagine. Uh, I guess uh, you, you would probably you have a lot to offer to the world of medicine if someone could just open up your your, your brain or your body and just how you operate. Just if they can get that yeah, documented. Yeah, they, yeah. They're gonna be like, what, what, what sort of insanity is going yeah. on in here? <laughs> Something <All right>. that's <laughs> never known of before, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you still alive? <laughs> okay. Okay. Last couple ones, right? Sight or sound? I'm going with sight. Okay, cool. And uh, Muay yeah, Thai or Matt, kickboxing? Even... Uh, Muay Thai. Okay, cool. Uh, Al Jermaine Serlin or Henry Cejudo? Oh, it depends on what context. Uh, Which one like... I'd rather train with? <laughs> yeah, in terms of who's going to win, yeah. I'll probably go with that. I mean, I wasn't talking about who would you rather have dinner with. But okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who, who drink is going to win? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? I'm going to uh, go Cejudo. Okay. I think Aljamain Sterling has got all the tools, but I think Suhudo's going to do it. Okay. Cool. Fairly constant in that. All right. And uh, why, what the heck? You know, who would you rather uh, be stuck in an elevator with? <laughs> oh, between who and who? Uh, between those you two. Same matchup. You, you know. Uh, oh, if I was going to be stuck in an elevator with them? Honestly, I think I'd rather uh, go Suhudo also because at least I could pick his brain. Okay. And if, and if it, if it gets if it gets really bad, I'll just jump off the top because uh, you know he's pretty short and uh, you know Aljamain Sterling is pretty big. He can get me if I start annoying him. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> so it's been a pleasure. I mean, you're you're, you're quite the character. You know, you're you're, you're fun to sort of um, really get under the, the the life story of you. You know, finding out what you like outside of the octagon, and that's what it's all about, really, with ATF and the whole uh, Q and A's that we bring here for the fans and the audience. It's just to know a little bit more about what you like outside the octagon. And, um, and uh, you know, you, you've seen what it's like over here in the UK in terms of the, the, the fandom um, for, for the sport. Yeah. So, uh, no, we, we're pretty hungry for it. And, uh, and, and, and you are just one of those fighters that bring endless entertainment to our screens. So uh, we'll, we'll thank you for that, man, massively. That's awesome. But the stage is yours. Any last comments you want to make? Any shout outs? Um, anything you wanted to say, perhaps, for, for, for those who chimed in? Yeah, I mean, thanks guys for coming in and uh, and 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 spending time with us. You know, with uh, I'd like to thank you. You know, against the fence for having me come in here and and you know let me rattle off my 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 stupid ideas off you guys. And you know, uh, just generally, thanks for having me. You know, as far as sponsors go, you know, I got Fight Tech. You know, they they hook me up with my fuel injection in my car. The uh, Hotchkiss is gonna hook up my uh, my suspension in my car. You know, if you're a muscle car guy. Let me know. You know, I'm on my Instagram. Hey, let send me car stuff, send me memes, send me music, man. I'm all into I'm into all that stuff. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Metalheads and uh and motorhead. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's it. That's that's it. what it is, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh that's all we've got time for. Do like and do subscribe if you haven't done so already. We have other content uh, that we'll be releasing throughout the week as well. So you can make sure you're you're fully entertained in this week, of course, when UFC has not been there on screens. But again, guys, thanks so much. Stay cool. 
and uh, we'll see you next time.